Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show, we're talking about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The 100. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Obviously, we're picking up right where last week's episode left off. So first of all, let's start off with, you know, Raven, J uh, Jackson, Imori, and Murphy. So their side of things, the fact of the matter is, like, obviously Murphy's able to dig, they're able to dig Imori out. So it's like, oh my god, he's like, oh, I thought you were hurt. And they look, and she's got reborn in her stomach. It's like, shit. Luckily, they were able to cut it. Obviously, her leg is really messed up. So, like, they have to deal with that first. And then they're going to deal with the rebar. But I thought it was just, like, this beautiful moment between Murphy and her. Because it's obviously, she's like, she felt like she's never really mattered before. But he's like... Because she feels like, because he's like, yeah, I bet you wish, you know, we were back, you know, playing, still playing, um, you know, uh, primes. Like, you know, we'd be, he's like, I bet you want to sleep in, you, you, you wish we were sleeping in about those beds again. And she was like, you hated it. He was like, yeah, but you loved it. And she's like, prior to that, she kind of felt like she was nothing. She kind of meant nothing before that because it made her feel like, oh, I finally mean something. I mean, I think that also comes back from her upbringing like her mutation and everything made her kind of an outsider and kind of you know to be thrown away by your family and everything but you know murphy's like no you've always mattered to me you are the most important thing to me and i thought that was so beautiful because i don't know if murphy's ever really because i'm trying to think maybe it's come up in the past but i don't know if he's ever expressed like the fact is he doesn't just like him more he loves her maybe it has come up before and i'm like i said you know i'm i'm terrible with these type of things so i'm probably forgetting the fact is but like this is him just being so heartfelt because you've never really seen him be this like emotionally connected to someone obviously this has been a long thing running between them plus let's not forget they spent six years in space together with everybody else so it is that situation of obviously you know you know obviously you know it's a situation of like they try to get her back to the uh well because they're trying to get the um device for you because if we need to get back to sanctum because jackson's like i need an actual sterilized lab and equipment to work on her and so it's like we need to keep you need to find where it is so we can get back to sanctum because if we don't she will die so murphy and raven are bashing away and obviously and maury's getting to the point that she's kind of giving up but jackson's telling her to keep fighting and so Raven's over there talking to her, you know, and it's like, obviously Raven's a very stubborn person about not wanting to give up and everything. And, but Amori's kind of willing to give up because she's like, because obviously it's like, they're dedicating so much time. It's like, we'll save you. It's like, no, no, no. What about the rest of our friends? What about Maddie? She most likely went with them. It's like, no, you're what matters right now. Cause they've lost way too many people. Obviously they're still doing the fact is we lost Bellamy. We literally just lost Gabriel too. It's like, there's, there's too much death. You know, we've lost too much too much over the course of this entire series and let let alone just this season alone it's like we've lost too much let's not lose anymore so we're not gonna lose you you know but like obviously you know and more is like talking about the fact is them being in a space she's like that tin can it's like oh we kind of had nothing to do and everything but she was like honestly those were some of the best times in her life because she's telling her even like i love you and everything um because I think that still goes back to the point, like, because I think Murphy's, like, the first person she ever found that was kind of a kindred spirit, like, oh, we're all about survival, but they found each other, but also that time they spent, that, those six years, of, it's like, we are, you know, we are a family, and for a long time, she went without having a family, but now she has family and friends, so, you know, it's like, so you know, make the choice to save others before me, like, if you get the option, don't go to Sanctum, go to Bardo so you can stop you know, Bill from getting his way, you know, by getting the code from Maddie. It's like, that's more important. Basically, my life versus everyone else's. But Raven's, like, defective the matter is she's lost too much. And she's like, we're not going to lose any more people. She's like, I love you too. And so the fact of the matter is I will save you and I will save everyone else because that's what I did. Because she was trying to say, like, you know, you made that decision with Hutch. But she was like, no, if I could, I'd go back and do that situation because I didn't give him a choice. And that situation played out like that. So she's like, I'm not going to do that again you know it's like this is the choice she's making and she's sticking with it you know she's not going to make the choice of leaving someone to die you know so especially when it's in her power to save them so obviously they unlock the machine and obviously she starts stops breathing so jackson's pumping blood and they're luckily able to unearth enough of it that they're able to get her away because even to the point like they're about to go through the portal and you know 
Murphy's like, thank you. And Jackson's just kind of like, because he, he's trying to be like, you know, let's just get her back. You know, let's save her. And Murphy's like, we'll come back for Nate. You know, it's just kind of, you know, it's like in, in that instance, everyone's focused on the one goal of making sure she survives. It's like they're worried about everyone else. But obviously, like her life is in a balance. And we're, they've been through, they've seen too much death recently, like I said, and always for them to lose any more people. Because it's interesting, the entire episode, the last time we saw Nyla and Ash, they were in the rooms, we we didn't even see them at all this episode. So there's that side of things. And then on the other side of things, there's the whole situation with, obviously, you know, it's like the whole Maddie situation. They're trying to take the pill so they can pop back, but it's like, well, you need someone on the other side to pull you in because all it does is triangulate your location. And obviously with no one on the other side wanting to get you, then there's no point. So now they're kind of trapped. Obviously the exit's trapped, so it's not like they can even get towards the spear themselves to use it, which even if they did, that would turn into a whole complicated thing because it's like, okay, we saved Maddie first, but it could have been a thing of like, okay, you get her, Amori there, tell us the code so we can go to Bardo or so. That probably would have turned into a complicated thing, so the choice is kind of taken out of their hands in this case. But obviously it's like, what are they going to do? Because they have to save Maddie immediately. Because obviously, it's like, obviously, this is all about that final war and everything. But Jordan's like, it's not a war, it's a test. And that it's kind of the parallels. Because while like Jordan's talking about that again, obviously, Bill's learning about it. But we'll focus on this group for now. And so, how torn up everyone is, in particular Clark, because for her, it's just like, you know, my daughter, it's like, she did this, I need to get to her, I need to save her, I need to help her, you know, and obviously, you know, Clark is, because I think everyone there can understand, you know, once again, Octavia brought it up, she understands more so than any day because of the time she spent with Hope, so she knows exactly how Clark feels, and obviously being a mother, Indra understands what she feels like, you know, because she cares about Maddie, and the same thing for um, Gaia, Gaia loves and cares about Maddie as well. And so it's a whole thing about this war and everything. It's like, you know, Jordan's like, he felt it. It's not just something he thinks or he's sure about. It's like, it's it's something he felt that he feels like in his gut that this is the right thing. This isn't a war. But obviously it's because they're like, let's kill, like, you know, what's the plan? She's like, you know, it's like, oh, let's kill Bill. But it's like, you can't just kill Bill because this is, and Guy explains it. It's like, she out of anyone would be able to explain it best being like, it's about faith. You can't shake that in them. It's like, even if you kill Bill, there's always going to be someone else who takes it because they believe in this so heartedly, wholeheartedly, they're willing to die. So even if you take him out, there's just going to be another one and another one. You can't kill Faith like that. So what do you do? But obviously for Clark, it's like, I don't give a damn about any of that. I don't care. War, test, it doesn't matter. Bill's going to die for everything, you know? And obviously she walks off on her own and she's struggling. She's just kind of like, why did Maddie do that? And Guy is like, what do you mean? Do the exact same thing you would do? Put your life in danger ensuring that the people that you care about most are alive. And obviously it hits Clark. She's like, is that what my mom felt all those times? Because she's like, you know, it never sank. It never sunk in before because, you know, you're in the motions of things. And it's like, you know. It's it's easy to kind of not think about it when you're not a mother yourself, but now she is a mother, you know, and it's like she now realizes like, you know, because I'm sure in moments like this is when she, you know, obviously probably makes her miss her mom even more. Um, and even the fact is, you know, it's probably moments like this she wishes she had her mom's advice with her, you know. And it's just that moment of realizing, like, because Clark blames herself, because she's like, did I put Maddie into this position? Because Maddie's basically taking after me. I'm getting mad at her for literally doing the same thing I'm doing. So because she learned it from me, sacrificing yourself for the people you care about. So it was just it was just this this beautiful moment, you know. I think, you know, coming full circle, like I said, her mom worrying about her, now her worrying about Maddie, and Maddie doing whatever she can to protect the people she cares about. It's just, it's interesting how that all kind of, you know, comes full circle in that regard. And obviously, you know, Gaia is willing to help her calm her mind, because it's like, you know, I'm trying to help her steal her mind so that she's not too... Because obviously she's burning with, you know, she's sad, she's angry, like she just, she's desperate to get Maddie back. And I just love her, because I don't know if she's, act, she's never actually expressly referred to Maddie as her daughter before now. Like, it probably, it's, it's been heavily hinted the way she's always treated Maddie, but I think this is the first time she's ever really outwardly called Maddie her daughter, you know? And so... She's scared about, you know, what Bill's going to do. So, obviously, Levin's there. Obviously, we're back on Bardo, and they're running the 
test on her. And I think it's so interesting how this whole situation works. Because if she had the um, flame, I'm sure this would be a little bit different. I mean, obviously, if they had the flame, they wouldn't need her in the first place. But it's the situation that, for Maddie, it's like... All those memories, they're they're they are on some like they're they're not because Levin talks about the fact is they're not actually there in the parts of the brain that contain the memory. It's like he has to basically rejigger around a lot of stuff to get to those memories because it's not like because they're not her memories. So like accessing them is on some like unconscious subconscious part of her mind, and obviously you know. Uh, when they actually kind of meddle with stuff around, uh, they unlock some of those memories and, you know, Maddie experiences them and he rem she remembers Becca saying like, no. And it's like, no, Becca told you it, it, you weren't ready because obviously the whole conversation is like, you think this is a war, it's a test. But Bill's like, oh, we've studied it so long and some kid thinks he understands. But even, even if he's right or for whatever reason... A war is just another version of a test. And he's like, I don't want my people to die, you know. But it's like, so if they don't have to and someone has to take the test, then so be, I'll be able to save so many lives. It's like, I love how you quickly, but you made it, you cemented it in everyone's mind that it was a full-blown war. So this admits, so this, it, and I think that might have sparked something in Levin. It's like, but that it means that after all this time, all this dedication to this one thing, believing it would be a war, that it isn't a war. It's something else. I mean, it's still a test, but it still shows you're not as right about everything that you thought you were. Because I think even um, because even Jordan said it himself, like he wishes he would have been able to tell Bellamy. Because that's another side of that thing for Clark. It's like she did everything to make sure that Maddie was okay. So that means like if Maddie, if Maddie running right, right into Bill's arms makes it so like I killed Bellamy for nothing. That's what that kind of makes. You know, it makes that point. So, but um, you know, they look into the memories and find out about the fact is that she was told all that time ago by Becca, you are, it's not meant for you, you're not ready. And obviously you see that look on Levin's face because I'm sure Bill has never mentioned that. Like to none of his people that Becca went there and saw what was on the other side and said he w it wasn't meant for him, he shouldn't go. So it kind of puts a little bit of doubt in Levin's mind, but also seeing like, wait, you're telling me to push her. He's like, at first he's like about being careful, but then Maddie deciding not to be cooperative. She's hurting herself just not to help him, you know? And so Levin gets replaced and obviously it makes Levin worried. So he tries to, you know, he tricks the lady into bringing Clark and Octavia there. But obviously they end up in the wrong spot, you know. Um, obviously, you know, the others are kind of left there because it's like, now what? You know, and Indra walks over to Guy and it's like, have a little faith, you know, because, you know, that whole conversation before. And it's so interesting hearing that from you know, Indra, because obviously that's always been, Guy has been the one of faith, and that's never really been Indra, but for her to say that, just let's have a little faith in this whole thing. Luckily, Levin was able to get to Octavia and Clark and set her free, and it's like, all right, but now we need a distraction, because now, oh, who do we go to? Hey, the person that's over here singing Shade Hater. So I was like, all right, now that we got him, he can be the distraction. He's like, I'm the king of blah, blah, blah. I tell you, he's like, okay, you can stay here and we'll lock the door behind us. He's like, fine, I'll be the distraction. And he pretty much goes on a killing spree. They never find him later on, but Clark's like, yeah, we pretty much figured this was going to be the case. It's like, he's a killing machine. Of course, he rips through everyone. And Eleven's like, oh, these were people I grew up with. And she's like, yeah, that's war. It's easy to look at war through a screen, like through, you know, um, her memories of knowing what war's like, but even that's not enough. Like seeing it firsthand, like all the blood. These are pe this is what war it's like. You prepared yourself for it and everything, but it's a lot different when you see it firsthand. Of like you know the cost of war. So, um, but when Clark and Octavia get there to Maddie, it's like okay, no one's in the room. I'm like, what's that? But Maddie's still there, and it's like okay, I'm here, and it's like she's not responding. I was like, what? I was like, no, and it's like this gut punch of like. Wait, what are you doing? I was like, you you can't be. I'm like, no, we're literally near the end of you. I didn't see that coming. She's not technically dead, but it's like she's almost almost in like a veget. Not even, I think it's probably a vegetative state, Sally, would be a kind of proof that Bill pushed her mind too far. He's willing to do whatever he can. Because that's a sad thing because I'm like, I think because this is a little girl you're doing that to. Because in his mind, it's like what I'm doing, he's so far in his belief because... 
but it's also a thing of not just belief. It's almost like you're so far in belief about yourself. You are so far up your own ass believing like I'm going to be the one who passes this test. It's like if you fail this test, it's going to be just like the, uh, Bar the Bardoans. You're going to get wiped out. You're going to wipe out all of humanity. You know, all these people who followed you all this time, you know, this cult you've built up for it to amount to nothing, you know. And that's the sad situation. It's just like Maddie ended up being the price to pay for this. And Levin saying like she's there inside of her mind. She just can't access her body. It's like like I said, she's almost like borderline in a vegetative state. And it's like and Clark holding her and like bawling her eyes out. You know, it's just like she it, it's it's too much. She you know. She had to kill Bellamy with her own hands. Gabriel just died. Now this. This is your daughter. This is your child. No one should have to, like, no uh, parent should have their child, you know, die before them. And just seeing that, just, it breaks your heart. Because it's like, I would have never expected. I would have thought, like, Maddie would have been fine. And just, you know, like, wherever the story would have ended, I never would have thought it would do something like that. I mean, it's rough enough. Like, Clark has lost Except for the people she has left, she lost her family. Like, her dad died years ago. Her mom died. Now, her her daughter? It's like, that's rough, dude. And then it's a situation of, at first she was, like, trying to pick up the gun. I was like, oh, she, I thought immediately, I was like, oh, she's doing a mercy killing. But then you find out, because I'll tell you this, like, I'm not going to let you do it. I'll be the one to do it, because you shouldn't have to be the one to bear this. And she was going to do it, but then it's like when Levin was like, he already got the code, that's why they stopped, because they didn't want, because obviously Maddie was in a, in a state that is irreversible, but also they wanted to make sure that she couldn't be used by Bill again, but he already got what he wanted, and that pisses Clark off even more, it's like, you got what you want and you left her in this state, you did this to my daughter, because I do believe strongly because of his own beliefs and everything, he would do it to his own daughter, I mean, it's like doing it to her, because he made that whole thing about like, oh, I want to see my daughter one more time, it's like, your daughter literally did everything to stay away from you and it's just coming full circle for you to end up doing this to Maddie is just kind of you know it's sad so they kind of leave Maddie in that state and but you know Clark being like I promise I'll come back and obviously she's filled with rage because no matter what it doesn't matter if it's going to stop everything as long as it stops Bill it's, who knows what's going to happen with the rest of you know the disciples like how you want to deal with that but for her it's about killing Bill and what you see is that tear rolling down Maddie's face so obviously like I said she's still in there so it's like is it, it it seems like it is something that is irreversible but I, I don't I don't know what to make of that you know and it's like that's a gut punch to end this episode on it's like man this show's gonna I, it makes you wonder like with the direction the show's heading you're like it's gonna have a depressing ass ending isn't it like it's gonna be somewhat probably uplifting some silver lining but overall it's just gonna be like man oh man because even then it's like it's still enough time for you to kill off more characters before it's done i mean it's like we've been we're dropping bodies episode after episode after episode it's like back to, i mean she's not technically dead but it's still like that's that's such a messed up situation so it's like where is this all going to go? I have no idea how this will all play out. Next week's episode is, in fact, the series finale. I have no idea, like, is there going to be, like... Because, I, once again, I was thinking, like, maybe there'll be some time travel element to reverse everything. I don't see that happening. Maybe, maybe not. What is this test going to look like? Who is going to be the person that takes the test? Will it be Clark? Will be Clark be more worthy than... Will Clark be more worthy than Bill? That's the whole situation, especially considering, like, Clark's got murder on the mind right now. She's not necessarily in the best position to be taking some tests like that. So it's like, you know, plus everyone back on Earth that's still there. Obviously, you know, um, Indra, Gaia, uh, Hope, um, Jordan, Nate, and obviously they're still at, well, you know, uh, Ny uh, Nyla and... Um, echo like you know what ends up happening on on their side of things so it's like i'm so curious to see what ends up going down in the series finale we will have to wait and see but really that's all i want to talk about to the next time we meet be happy be safe all like to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye